Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about fifth topic of immunotechnology called as ELISA test. Right. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you the intro of the ELISA test and the types of the ELISA like this indirect sandwich competitive. So all of this will be explained detailly in this video. So watch this video till the end. So now let us discuss about the intro of the ELISA test and how it is performed. I mean the protocol of this ELISA test. So ELISA, E-L-I-S-A, ELISA. So what is the full form of the ELISA? Enzyme linked immune sorbent assay. So why it is called as enzyme linked? I'm going to say you in the protocol. So what is the definition of this ELISA test and why it is performed actually? What is the use of this ELISA test? It is a qualitative technique which is mainly used to identify the presence of the antibody in the given sample. For example, you are going to take a sample for this LSA test and you have to know that whether that sample consists of the antibodies or not. So what type of sample you are going to take here? Well, you know white blood cells, I mean serum. You are going to take a serum which consists of the antibodies. So here you are going to test whether the antibodies are present in that serum or not. Right? So to perform that LSA test is mainly used. So before knowing about the protocol of this LSA test, you have to know a basic a basic idea about this antigen as well as the antibody interaction so firstly to know about that interaction you have to know about the antigens as well as the antibodies so the green color one which i have drawn here like star like structure is called as an antigen so here antigens are nothing but the foreign particles where either it may be in the case of a bacteria or else in the either it may be case in the virus which are very harmful to our body and that antigens will be present in the environment, say in this case, uh, bacteria. So that antigens which are in the form of bacteria, which is present in the external environment will enter into your body, into our body. So once it enters into our body, then what happens? Then immediately we know that our blood consists of WBC cells. That's nothing but white blood cells, right? So that white blood cells will get activated in such a way that it starts releasing the antibodies against to this antigen so here antigen will enter into our body and once this antigen enter will enter your body then what happens immediately the white blood cell starts releasing the antibodies once this antibodies will get released then what happens it starts interacting towards the antigen and forms the antigen antibody complex or else it is also called as agab complex antigen antibody complex right so this is your antigen and this is your antibody both of them will get interacted and forms the antigen antibody complex and now what happens once this antigen will get interacted to the antibody it forms the antigen antibody complex then what happens then this antibody starts killing this antigen it starts lysing this antigen so once this antigen will get killed then what happens then it doesn't cause any any disease to our body right so normally if the antibodies will not be produced then now what happened then this antigen starts uh, you know defecting affecting the tissues and affecting the body and it affects the total human body because it is very harmful right so once the antibody starts releasing from the white blood cells which are against to this antigen then what happens it starts killing this antigen where there will be no effect which can be seen in our body so this is the basic introduction which you have to know about the antigen and antibody interaction so now let us learn about the elisa test protocol and the procedure okay so now what you are going to do firstly you are going to take a micro titrate plate so this is your micro titrate plate so now in this micro titrate plate we are going to prepare wells so here i have drawn only three wells this is first well second well and third well you know this uh, all of these are called as wells uh, there will be many wells but i have drawn only three wells here so now in these wells what you are going to do you are going to add the sample so why are we going to take the sample here in the definition what i have mentioned here it is mainly used this test is mainly used to identify the presence of the antibodies in the given sample so uh, to know the presence of the antibodies you needed a sample right so you have to place that sample in these wells so we know that the samples consist of the antibodies so to know that whether there is a presence of the antibodies or not we have to test it so uh, let us assume that there is a presence of the antibodies in that serum or else in that sample so you are going to add the serum which consists of the antibodies so all of this red color one which i have drawn is known as antibodies right so now this is the first step which are going to perform this is the initial step which are going to perform in this LSA test so what is the second step so now we are going to take the one of the i mean just just for the explanation i have took one of the well here so in that well there will be presence of the antibodies and now you what you are going to do you are going to add the antigens this triangle shapes the green color one which i have drawn are known as antigens so now we are going to add the, all of these antigens and once this antigen will get added into this well then the antibody starts receiving that antigens where the antigen antibody complex formation occurs same which i have said you here right once the antigen antibody complex will be formed then what happens this is your second step actually now coming to the third step what happens 
So here, in the third step, what you're going to do is that you're going to add the enzyme-linked antibodies. So what are these enzyme-linked antibodies actually? So if you see here, this is antibody. This brown color one which I have drawn is known as antibody. And this blue color one which I have drawn is known as enzyme. Right? Enzyme-linked antibody. Hence, it is called as enzyme-linked antibody. So in the name itself, it indicates that enzyme-linked immune sorbent assay. Right? That's the reason we will call this LSA test. Hence, it is abbreviated as enzyme-linked immune sorbent assay. Right? So why are you calling it as enzyme-linked immune sorbent assay? Because the antibodies which you are going to take here consists of the enzyme. Right, so this blue color one which I have drawn is known as enzyme, and this brown color one is nothing but the antibody. So it is called as enzyme linked antibodies. So you are now you are going to add this enzyme linked antibodies into this well. Now what happens? See here. So we know about the enzymatic reaction. Basic idea about the enzymatic reaction that enzyme will get reacted with the substrate to form the product. This is a normal enzymatic reaction where we all of us know. Right. So in the same way, this is the antibody and this is the enzyme which I have said you right. So now this enzyme also will get reacted to the substrate to form the product. So what type of substrate which you are going to add here in this well is that we are going to add the strong acids. Once you pour the strong acids into this well, then what happens is that this enzyme will get reacted with the substrate. Substrate is nothing but the strong acids I have said you right. So this enzyme will get reacted with the strong acids and forms the product. And that product will be in the form of a color where the color will be exhibited out which can be visible through our naked eyes or else either it can be visible with the help of a microscope okay so this is where the enzymatic reaction occurs so i have said you that this antibody consists of the enzymes right so what type of enzymes are used actually in this LSA test are that hrp that's nothing but horse radish peroxidase and another one is ap alkaline phosphatase and another one is beta galactose galactosidase so these are the three type of enzymes which can be used for this LSA test to perform the result right in this way the enzyme will get reacted to form the product and the product will be exhibited in the form of a color where it is visible through our neck dyes which i have said you right so this is a micro titrate plate right so in that many wells will be present i have said you at the beginning of the introduction so then what then what then there will be presence of the color change remarks because the enzyme will be reacted with the substrate and forms the color products right so in this way we can uh, we can visualize these color change remarks right so by this color change remarks we can assume that there is a presence of antibodies in that serum so what is the main aim of this LSA test? It is mainly used to identify the presence of the antibodies in the given sample I have said you. So if there is a presence of the antibodies, then this color change remarks can be visualized. But if there is no presence of the antibodies, then this color change remarks cannot be visualized. I mean, uh, this color change cannot be obtained, right? So this is about the LSA test. So now let us come about the types of the LSA test. Now coming to the about the types of LSA test, the first one which I'm going to explain to you is the indirect ELISA. So this is a well, right? All of these are nothing but the wells. And here I'm going to explain to you the step by step process. So this is a well. So in the firstly, what you're going to do in the well, we are going to add the antigens. And now after the antigens, what you're going to do, you are going to add the antibodies. And once the antibodies will be added into this well, these antibodies will get reacted to the antigens and form the antigen antibody complex. So these antigens, so these antibodies which we have added in this second step is nothing are called as primary antibodies. So this brown color one which I have drawn are nothing but the primary antibodies. Okay. So in the next step, what you are going to do? Now we are going to add the antibodies which consists of the enzymes. That's nothing but the enzyme linked secondary antibodies. So here we have already used the antibodies hence those antibodies are called as primary antibodies. Now we are going to use the secondary antibodies which are linked with the enzyme. Hence those antibodies are called as enzyme leading to secondary antibodies. So now once you add this enzyme leading to secondary antibodies, then it starts binding towards the primary antibodies. Okay. Now the secondary antibodies are also called as anti-antibodies. Okay. Because we are, uh, because this anti-antibodies, why it is called as anti-antibodies? Because it is interacting to the antibodies right the primary antibodies hence it is called as anti antibodies okay so this enzyme linked to secondary antibodies will get interacted to the primary antibodies which consists of the antigens right so now what happens so here the presence of the enzyme will be present in the secondary antibodies and that enzyme will get reacted with the substrate substrate is nothing but the uh, what we say these strong acids which are going to add in this well are nothing but the substrates so the, that enzyme will get reacted with that strong acids and forms the color product now, with the help of that visualizing that color, we can identify that there is a presence of the antibodies. So this is one of the type of the LSA which is called as indirect LSA test. Now coming to the second type of the LSA test is nothing but the sandwich LSA. So this is very easy. So now if you see this is the well and in that well we are going to take the antigen antibody complex. So this is the antigen and this is the antibody. So antigen antibody complex we are going to take in the first well. 
so now what you are in this well actually so now what you are going to do in the next step in the next step what you are going to do is that you are going to add the enzyme linked to secondary antibodies then this will be acted as a sandwich like thing so for example if you take a sandwich the upper layer will be bread and the lower layer will also be bread but in the middle there will be presence of the stuff which forms a sandwich right in the same way if you see here this is the presence of the antibody and here also there is a presence of the antibody so what is the what is there in the between these antibodies antigens are present so this red color one which i have drawn are nothing but the antigens and this green color one and this brown color one nothing but the antibodies i mean this is called as a primary antibody and this is called as a secondary antibody so between this primary antibody and secondary antibody antigens are present so between both of the antibodies antigens are present which looks like a sandwich model hence it is called as sandwich elisa right so now coming to the third type of elisa test competitive elisa so here in this case also we are going to take two different type of antibodies normal antibody and another is enzyme linked antibody where it is also called as primary antibody and this is called as a secondary antibody so instead of calling it as a primary antibody and secondary antibody it's better to call it as a normal antibody and this is called as a enzyme linked antibody so why it is called as enzyme linked antibody because at the fc end of the antibody enzyme has been linked hence it is called as enzyme linked antibody which i have said you at the before of the introduction only so now here we are going to take two cases so why it is called as competitive elisa actually because there is a competition which is present between normal antibody and the enzyme linked antibody so what is that competition actually that competition is that whether that antibody should get binded over to this more number of antigens or less number of antigens so how you can conclude this competition see here see when the concentration of the normal antibody is more then it can bind to more number of antigens but if the concentration of normal antibody is less then it can bind only with a few antigens right in the same way the same applies here also in the enzyme linked antibodies if the concentration of this enzyme linked antibody is less then it can bind only with a few antigens but if the concentration of the enzyme linked antibody is more then it can bind to more number of antigens that can be differentiated into two cases case 1 as well as a case 2 So in the case when I have took more concentration of the normal antibodies and the less concentration of the enzyme linked antibodies. In the case two, I have took less concentration of the normal antibodies and more concentration of the enzyme linked antibodies, which is quite opposite to that case one. Okay. So as the concentration of the more, uh, it can be seen in normal antibodies, it can bind to more number of antigens. As you have, is as if you see here the red color dot like structures which I have drawn are known as anti are known as antigens. Okay. So these normal antibodies can bind to. more number of antigens because the normal antibody concentration is more so if you see in the case of the enzyme linked antibodies the it can bind only with a few antigens right so only four antigens it can bind to the only four antigens but if you see in the case of the second in this the second case see here the concentration of the normal antibody is less hence it can bind only with the few antigens right so if you see here the concentration of the enzyme linked antibody is more so it can bind to more number of antigens right So now, if you see here in the first case, here only two enzyme-linked antibodies I have drawn here. So as there is only two enzyme-linked antibodies, now this enzyme will get reacted with the substrate, right? Uh, here, the which I have written here, enzyme will get reacted with the substrate to form the product, which is which will be in the form of a color, which I have said you in the introduction part only. So that enzyme will get reacted with the substrate once you add the strong acids, then it forms the product called as color. But Imagine yourself here less color will be obtained but here more color will be obtained why because here only two antibodies i mean only less concentration of the antibodies enzyme linked antibodies are present hence it can produce only less amount of color but here the concentration of the enzyme linked antibody is more it can produce more amount of color so as the less color has been uh, produced then the absorbance will value will also be less as the more color is produced then the more ab then absorbance value will also be more so how you can know the value of the absorbance by using spectrophotometer right so we can conclude that if the absorbance of product is less then the concentration of the antibodies in the sample is more if the absorbance of the product is more then the concentration of the antibodies in the sample is less the both of these statements are very important okay so this will be about your elisa test right so If you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box or else you can also ask in the WhatsApp group so for notes on this topic you can just ping me a message in the WhatsApp group so to join in the WhatsApp group the link will be given in the description box so by using that link you can join us in the WhatsApp group and the notes will be given for you so thank you